Hey ho, let's go. Wishing everyone a awesome Tuesday. Hope you're well wherever you are. Welcome to our little show. Following a week off, I am Sean Buckley Martin. This is episode 62 of Huxley's Pit. And as we always do this time of the show, we ask you the question, where else would you rather be than right here? Boom, right now. By way of introduction, I'm a freelance sports writer for the Albany Times Union, avid sports enthusiast, big time homer for my teams. Without apologies, uh, you can follow the show as always on Twitter at Pugsley's Pit, taking the podcast, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Here's part of the Godzilla Media Network. Uh, later in the show, in the My World segment, I'm going to take a an update uh, on the A's. Proudly got my sell shirt last night. Thank you, Amazon, uh, and everything going on out there. But uh, before that, we are going to talk a little A's by way of uh, timing. Just today, we're going to welcome Julian Gallardi, avid Yankee fan, right, to talk some New York City baseball today. Julian, welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the connection that we made at the New York Sports Hall of Fame back in November. Shout out to Chris Vitale. He's the man. <laughs> and um, yeah, great timing for this. He messaged me and you, now we got Yankees A's. Awesome, mate. Hey, that's the showdown in the Bay tonight, the East Bay, the good side. <laughs> Wait, but before we get into it, talk just a little bit about what you're doing now and your, your, uh, the way you're involved with, with Yankee baseball before we get to the topic which is New York City baseball, but mostly in the Bronx. Sure. So um, I do some work in the minor league system, too. I actually just go to a lot of Somerset Patriot games, which is our double-A team. Uh, I do the Yankees stuff on Twitter. I'm on YouTube. I'll do some writing, too, a lot of video clips and editing. And we're progressing with the guy station as well. It's a hat I'm wearing. It's our podcast channel. Uh, we're on a new show called The Morning Brew now, weekly on Mondays. Um, me and my co-host, Sandy Molinaris. So that's what we're working on. And uh, a lot of things coming ahead, a few podcasts lined up. That's great. That just debuted this week, right? Yes, it did. Yes, we just went off yesterday. That was the first day of it. So it's it's fresh. That's awesome. Well, congrats on that uh, new venture. Thank you. So let, let's talk New York City baseball, otherwise known as the land of massive disappointment <laughs> so far. That's how it feels, right? There's, yeah. there's, it's, it seems like doom and gloom in, in the Bronx, though, 43 and 35. You're eight games over and, and you're in a wild card spot. What, what's this first couple of months feel like for the Yankees? Uh, it's been a little hectic. I mean, there's a lot of injury concerns. Uh, Aaron Judge being out is huge, obviously, literally and figuratively. Um, we have a lot of pitching injuries, but the pitching's been well. The real frustration with the Yankee fans lies with the lack of offense, especially when Aaron Judge isn't playing. They only average around three runs a game without him. Like, it's not fun to watch half the time. It's not aesthetically pleasing by any means, but they're winning with pitching right now, and they are eight games over. The problem is Tampa Bay is well, well and gone, the nine and a half up. Even Baltimore has a nice cushion on us, so around six games. There have been a little surprise, though some people saw it coming a little bit with the pipeline talent they had. So it's a scrap. It's a dogfight. And, I mean, the wild card window is tight. You see yeah. there's, like, five teams all in it, basically. Like, the Orioles are well ahead, and the Astros and the Angels are only a half game out, and Toronto's right below the Yankees, too. So there's not really a lot of breathing room right now, and, when Aaron Judge is out, like all the mistakes get margin um, capitalized. It seems like every little detail is like important. The pitches, the base running, the bat empty at bats. Like it's just it's been a little bit rough, I'll say. Is it? Hey, don't sleep on the twenty and sixty A's. We're only twenty three and a half <laughs> out. The March to October baseball begins tonight. <laughs> is it? How how you know the Judge injury was just a freak play. It's not like he pulled a muscle or something or any issues he's had in the past. How hard is that to square that he's he's going max effort on a defensive play and now we don't know when he's coming back? Yeah, and I don't think it's fair to say he's injury prone. I think it was just a freak thing, like you said. People were like, oh, yeah. he gets injured too much. He's not. He's already not playing. He's making all this money and stuff. I mean, 
It's just a stupid setup of Dodger Stadium. Now they fixed it a little too late, obviously. It's an old stadium that has a, a bad wall or whatever. And he made a great play. We won the game, but it came at a huge cost, obviously. And um, it's been tough. I mean, they've had some good guys fill in, like the Billy McKinney's and Jake Bowers of the world. But it's just the top guys aren't producing well enough without him. Yeah. Is can you explain it, it? Maybe it's just Yankee Twitter. What What is your feeling on Aaron Boone, the job he has done the last few years? If nothing else, you can tell the Yankee front office is very loyal to the veterans, the players, yeah. and to Boone. Um, is that? Do you think that's bought him some extra time? Definitely. I think he's been a little bit good and bad in a certain sense. I don't think he's the worst, but he's definitely not the best by any means. He's kind of like maybe. He's a little bit above average. I mean, if you look at the regular season stuff, he's been great. The playoffs has been a big problem. He's been outmanaged a lot. There's been questionable decisions, although some I question if they come from the top and not him, honestly, because we know yeah. how there's been a lot of talk about that. But I think he's – this year, I mean, I can't fault him too much this year with all the injuries that have taken place. I guess I'm, I'm not okay with what he's done. The only thing I don't really love so much is, like, he needs to figure out a better uh, way to use the bullpen and like let the starters go or take them out sooner in certain situations. That's cost them a few. Yeah. What about Brian Cashman? My concern with him all these years since the turnover in the ownership was when, when you have to become fiscally responsible, it's a different ball game than when, than when George was here yeah. um, spending everything to win. I, I don't know what, what kind of job Cashman has done. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on his effort? Cause you wouldn't have one title in 20 something years uh, if George Steinbrenner was still, still running here. Yeah, that's, a, that's definitely a topic. I mean, Cashman's also hot and cold to me. The Montas trade, which we'll get to was an absolute disaster for us. Thank you. Well, Thank for you. you. Yeah. I gave you some help there. Um, the Joey Gallo <laughs> trade was a train wreck and you see Ezekiel Duran producing to make it worse. Although they do get Clayton beater. So they got something good out of it at least. Um, he's made some bad moves with guys being hurt. I mean, there's been some flukes. Like, like he signs for Adoni, he hasn't thrown a pitch yet. Like instances like that. Trades for Harrison Bader when he's injured, he can't stay healthy either. Ed Frost gets Tommy John. Trevino, your guy, gets Tommy John. Like some of this stuff's not on him, but at the same time, he needs to make some better moves. I don't think like he's done enough to enforce his offense behind Aaron Judge. Like he didn't add any. They didn't add any bats. Like I was pumped for Adoni, and I was all in. And I still am. I think it was a good move, but he didn't add any bats when this team is struggling to hit in the playoffs. And they just say it's a crapshoot, but they keep losing every year. So, like, there has to be a way to fix that. They can't just throw their hands and be like, oh, we made it. Uh, it was a crapshoot. Like, that's that's what's really bothering us. Is is there been a more polarizing Yankee in, in, in a long time than Aaron Hicks? Oh, who's man. now gone, and, and that mantle was passed to Josh Donaldson recently? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. We kind of knew this was going to happen. Like, as soon as Hicks walked out the door, like, Donaldson's next. Like, there's always got to be someone. If it's not IKF, I mean, Hicks, and now he's doing well in Baltimore, and more power to him. But Donaldson, I think I just said he's on the clock. Like, you see the stuff happening with him sitting three straight. The meeting that they say was a baseball talk, which is obviously a bunch of phony stuff. But yep. And he's a former A, so – and he hits well in that stadium, I think. So maybe you'll see him make it rain out there tonight. He's going to be pissed off when he gets back in there that much, I know. And, um, I mean, for Donaldson, he's doing everything he can, but he just might be past his prime. He's 37 years old. He just yeah. might not have it anymore. But his defense is still good, although he's even making some defensive miscues now, which I think is why they kind of started to sit him down, because that was the one thing you can hang your hat on with him. Yeah. As Domingo Herman, what's his status? Has he thrown his last pitch, pitch as a Yankee? He's been – just a gas can uh, times a thousand the last couple of times out. He, I mean, he's actually pitching against you guys on Wednesday. Okay. So he's still in it. Good. I think he was doing really well before that too. The last two yeah. starts of he's forgotten how to pitch. Like his ERA is over five now. That's how bad they've been. He was in the threes, I think before that, like these are being big blow up spots for him. And if he blows up against Oakland, we're going to be asking a lot of questions, especially because it's three straight bad starts. And obviously, they're not the best offensive team in the league by any means. So he's got to be able to at least give like a quality start, hopefully. But the Yankees have a lot of rotational depth. So if he falls on his face again, like maybe they'll do something. You know, Radon's coming back soon. Yeah. Esther's down. Um, so 
Vasquez has been good in the AAA, so they have some options down there. The uh, I got to make a note uh, <clears throat> with Herman pitching Wednesday to take the over. Um, <laughs> It was pitching for Oakland Wednesday. I, I don't know, but all I know is this with the A's is once you get in the bullpen, then I just have to turn the channel and find something else to do because no no knock on the players and the effort. They're just – that pitching staff especially is filled with people that aren't ready for the big leagues. So. I mean, it's not on the players that the Oakland A's put together no. such a shitty roster. They're doing everything they can. They just <laughs> don't have, like, MLB caliber talent in a lot of spots, like you're saying. Exactly. So it's not exactly. – they're doing everything they can. There's some good young players in Oakland, that, and and the, the effort's there, right? I don't I don't get upset with the with the pitching when it doesn't work well because a few of them are just not ready, and especially in the bullpen because they're not paying anybody any money, so you're getting the bottom of the barrel in the major league part. Um, yeah. But they they got some good young kids, and Sears uh, has been pitching lights out. The guy we got from the Yankees, Walter Chuck's been pretty good. I like him um, a lot. You know, Blackburn's back, so. And the offense is actually starting to hit a little bit. You, you got some players there. I feel like I'm talking about the Major League Cleveland Indians um, <laughs> on the movie. But uh, it's, yeah, it is what it is. But what um, while we're on that, I asked you before, what's the reaction going to be in the Bronx when they come out west and the A's get the brooms out and sweep the Yankees out of, out of the East Bay? I think uh, the Twitter app would probably self-destruct on Yankees Twitter. <laughs> I think you'd see a lot of tirade rant videos, fire everyone, bench this guy. Like, it would be an absolute mess. And it's something the Yankees can't afford right now because they have to take advantage of these winnable games when Aaron Judge is out. So we're hoping for a sweep. He might lose one because crazy things happen out there. And, you know, that's a funky ballpark you guys play in. And I loved when you guys showed out to do the sell the team chance. I think a lot of the MLB was behind you guys with that. That was a cool moment. Yep, sell it. <laughs> that guy's terrible. I don't even know his name, but he's god awful. Um, here, here. <laughs> I, I hate to, I hate to do this to a guest, but there he is. Let me see him. Oh. <laughs> there he is. Oh God, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's awful. I've heard through. Um, and by the way, I love. I just for kicks. I love watching Yankee Twitter when it's not going well because it's awesome. And then you know. Going, so, we're going through it's tough. I gotta like log out half the time. I just like keep scrolling when things aren't going well. I just keep my head down, like put out some info, I guess, and just like ignore all that crap. It's just like a bunch of nonsense. Uh yeah. a lot of non-logical stuff on there. I've heard that the, the A's fans that are going to go, I, I, I expect some decent crowds with the Yankees because the Yankees always drive. I, some Yankee fans are going. I've seen a couple on the app making that trip in California. So I, we'll probably have a few out there. I've never been out there. I guess I'll never get to go to that stadium. But if you guys pull up to Vegas, I'll definitely go there. Yeah, the, the thing with the stadium in Oakland is, yeah, it's old and it's falling apart. But it's for me, it was some of the greatest memories for me as a kid. Um, I grew up 10 miles south. So... It's tough. It's tough to see that. But but I had heard a lot of A's fans wanted to buy the, the tickets in the sections near the Yankee broadcast. So the you sell the team chant will come through loud and clear in New York so the Yankee fans can can experience that. Too. I will totally let you know if I pick that up. Maybe I'll even clip some stuff if I hear it and post it online. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see what happens with that. I mean, I'm sure your feet will pick it up, too, if it happens. But um. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough spot. So I want to ask you, what is the status? Are you guys going there next year? Is it two years? Like, how is everything working with that? They, The last I heard on where they're going to play next year is they say they're going to honor the last year, the least in the Coliseum. I don't believe that. I think okay. that's just them maybe posturing and see if there could be a buyout somewhere. Got you. Um, I saw something the other day. Someone wrote the San Francisco A's for, for two years. I'm like, that's not happening. Because it's um, going to take time to build that stadium. It's not going to be ready next year. I don't know how long. No, it's at 2028. So I've heard they're oh, going to play. Long? Like, wow. Holy crap. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I've heard um, the AAA stadium in Vegas, which is an outdoor stadium. I, I don't know how they do that in the summer. Even at night, it's it's really hot. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I honestly don't think that the front office there has a plan. I think they're kind of making this up as they go, which is why they seem so ill-prepared, though. They were going to win that vote in Vegas once it got to the floor. I mean, it's the fix was in there. It's all politics. I just can't believe it's going to be till 28. I thought it was going to be a lot sooner. I guess it's no. going to take that much time to break the ground to get everything finalized. Well, they, get, they have to knock down the Tropicana and then clear it. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's, that's where it begins. So, 
And then they're going to have to figure out how to take that caricature of a stadium that they created and stuff it into the nine acres available to them when it's much bigger than that. So, oh wow, yeah, was, no, I mean they got Raiders, they got the Knights. So like Vegas is happening with the sports. It'll be interesting to see how they draw when it finally comes to fruition. I my opinion is they're going to struggle. It, there'll be a there'll be a honeymoon period, but I don't think this owner. Well, I, what I think is going to happen is the owner once a shovel goes in the ground, he's going to sell the team to a casino. Mm, and then maybe he's going to be around for the opening. But if he is, I think they're going to struggle after a couple of years because this guy is all he cares about is his pockets. He doesn't. Yeah. He's not interested in. You know, I've had people say, "Well, once they go to Vegas, free agents are going to want to play there." I'm like, "Well, you're going to have to, but you're going to have to take about a million bucks a year. That's all he's going to get." Yeah, it's it's going to be tough. I mean, hopefully he sells and you guys get someone that actually cares about building a winning product mm -hmm. again. I mean, Oakland had a lot of good teams with low talent. They traded them off, but they kept them going. But now you lost the people in the pipeline that were used to come up and make those differences. Like once you had to ship out the high money players, now that's not yeah. there anymore. Well, they, you know, it's funny. The all-star game, MLB is going to want to put their earmuffs on during some of the telecasts because four guys that are going to be there are Matt Olson, Matt Chapman, Sean Murphy and Marcus Simeon, all guys that the A's have gotten rid of in the last couple of years or let go in free agency. Um, and they're going to be a big part of that game. So, Are A's fans making a plan to go out there and like be vocal about them when they're on the field or something? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I think they'll, they'll have a decent presence there. These sell shirts, I know there was somebody caught in London the other day wearing one. So <laughs> uh, the sell shirts are, are getting around. Hey, back with it with the Yankees. I got a question for you on just their organizational philosophy. Okay. Mm -hmm. You look at guys like Ellie De La Cruz come up and some of these young players that are really getting the Orioles are bringing up a prospect every two weeks. It seems like unbelievable. They're having great success. What is it with the Yankees sticking with these older guys and keeping you now Volpe's up and he's having some growing pains, but, but Peraza's down there. Um, they seem to be going against the current wave, but not with great results with the guys that they're sticking with. I agree 100%. A lot of the Yankee fans feel that frustration, too. We're banging the table to get Peraza up. Like, we just want them to TFA Tonelson and let Peraza play third base. <laughs> like, that's what we want. Yeah. I think he's earned the opportunity. He played in the playoffs last year. He's been doing good in AAA. I mean, Volpe edged him out in spring. But Peraza hasn't had a big sample size to see how he could hit in the MLB yet. I want to see how he can hit in that majors. I mean, he's only got like 72 at-bats, I think. So it's not a lot to draw from. I can't really say anything good or bad about it. And he can run. I know that. His defense is good. And there's a whole logjam with Torres and LeMahieu, too. They poorly constructed the roster. That's the other problem because they are stuck with Donaldson because the money is through trying to ride it out. They already let Aaron Hicks go. Uh, IKF's in the outfield now, so that's not really an issue anymore. And he'll play third occasionally. They still have Oswaldo Cabrera, who should probably go back to AAA, but guys keep getting hurt. So he yeah. keeps getting forced back up. But, yeah, we want to see the young talent move. You know, the Patriots have a lot of great players, and they've just won their first half championship again. We want to see some of those guys get to AAA, start to knock on the door a little bit. They've been moving their pitchers a little bit, though. Like Vasquez and Brito have gotten chances this year. Uh, Clayton Beater and Will Warner in AAA knocking at the door now. So, like, you're seeing the pitchers' movement, but they do seem very slow with the position players. Yeah, and Brito's got the ball tonight. Yes, it is Brito tonight. You know, the um... – the, the injuries, is it just seem like the Yankees are snake bitten or is there something going on with the coaching or the, the strength and conditioning people that they're they're missing some pages in their in their binder? I think it's like a combination of injury prone players and just and snake bitten a little bit. I don't because we got we overall the staff with Eric Cressy, he's been doing decent. Hal talked about it. He said, like, we're average injuries, which I don't believe. And he said they've been, like, below average, which I don't exactly buy. He said he was going to look into some stuff. Um, but, like, I don't exactly know. It's a, it's the biggest mystery in Yankee land, what's going on. I mean, Harrison Bader's an injury-prone player. Gene Carlos Stan's an injury-prone player. Razone's had his issues in the past. So, like, some of it's just, like, track record kind of, like, catching up, I feel like. But yeah. some of it's just like you're pulling muscles, like you know, out of nowhere. It's just a little bit of a mess, and all these pitchers going down too. A lot of pitching injuries. Yeah, yeah. I ask you about two more guys. Volpe, I, I think he's he's a superstar, and in the, in the, he's just got to earn his stripes a little bit. Uh, but Volpe and Severino, um, I don't know if it was Vitali on Twitter. Somebody did was saying that maybe Severino would be better off in a closer role. Yeah, um, I like Anthony a lot. 
I covered him a lot last year. Uh, some of the pains have been tough this year with his offense. His defense has been relatively good. I want to see his steals get back up there. I feel yeah. like he stopped running when he got started slumping. He hasn't been walking as much as McKay anymore. He had a little talk with Austin Wells, changed his stance a little bit, he's seen some better results. So he, maybe he's starting to click. I mean, he's a guy that um, he struggled at every level in the beginning, like even high A, double A, triple A. Like he's gone off the slow start. So I think he just has to find that stretch. And once he gets that stretch, he could just take off and let loose. And we, I mean, he's hitting under 200, which isn't great, obviously. Yeah. So, yes, it's in the 600s, like low to mid probably. I think it's maybe like 630-ish if I check. But um, I still believe in Anthony, no, no matter what happens. And he, they're going to ride out with him. He's not going anywhere. They said they fully trust him. It's the right call. Yeah. So we just got to stick through it. How about Severino? What are your thoughts on him? He said he said a couple tough setbacks. sebi has been tough. Um, he has a lot of talent, but – He's another guy that he can't stay healthy either. I don't really think this is on the Yankees. I think it's more a Seve issue with this. Honestly, he just can't get it together. He's fighting them on like timelines of when he should be back. He always feels like he should be coming back sooner, but they always proceed with caution with him for obvious reasons. And he's been up and down this year. His last start was really good. He's not pitching against you guys this series, so, um, but he'll be pitching against um, St. Louis. But I think he's good. I don't know if his future's in pinstripes as a free agent because they do have some options down there. I know people have said to put him in the bullpen at times to preserve his arm. It has been a take. Um, I don't know because, like, right now they kind of need him in the rotation. Maybe, like, down the line if other guys step up in the rotation, they could explore it. But he's probably going to finish out as a starting pitcher, I think. Yeah. Hey, let's move over. Uh, since since you're down there, I, uh, the Mets are the monster disappointment <laughs> of the year. Uh, they're just they're just cursed. That, that's the only way I can square it. There's just something that happens when somebody puts on a Met uniform that they just underachieve on their way to the bank. I have to say, I'm very happy I'm not a Mets fan because um, <laughs> it can always be worse. So that's how I'm looking at it right now. And the Mets, man, they might not even – they're cooked. I don't even know if they're going to make the playoffs. They're like eight and a half out of the wild card. They're like 16 out of the division. Um, everything seems to be a disaster there. They're calling up the young kids. They're getting good results with some of them. They don't want to stick with Vientos for some reason. Daniel Vogelback keeps getting time. I have no idea yeah. why they're so stuck with Vogelback. Um, he's been terrible for them. Verlander and Scherzer have underachieved. So, though JV was all right yesterday, but only went five innings. But yeah. the real problem with the Mets is their bullpen, though. Their bullpen's a train wreck. They can't. They don't have anyone in there without Diaz. It's been exposed now. David Robertson, our old buddy, is doing a hell of a job, though. But I'm pretty. That's cool to see. Um, but their offense has been anemic too, even with Alonso playing. They just haven't getting been production. Like Starlin Marte, another performer, right for a second. He's been bad. Um, when Tor hasn't lived up to it, and um, kind of can has taken a step back too. Another A right there, yes, <laughs> a lot of A's connections. They leave, they, some of them just lose the magic when they leave the Coliseum. <laughs> it looks like that, right? <laughs> the um, is it? I, I'm just I just look at the Mets, I, you know, Buck Showalter the other day, they lose that game against Philly on Sunday with all that those runs in the eighth inning. You know, and Gary Cohen on the final out says the 42nd loss is the worst. And Buck Showalter tried to stay away from his best relievers. I, I'm a little surprised Buck Showalter still has a job today. I mean, it's tough because he did so well last year. I think that's what he, his leash is going on. He won 100 games last year. Yeah. He might not make it, though, at this rate. He really might not make it. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't think Edwards has done a great job either, though. So I think he needs some blame as well. Yeah. Um, how do you have such a high payroll and get so little production? We can plan about our payroll and production, but that's like the worst of all time what we're seeing right now. Yeah. All right. Listen, Julia, I really appreciate you coming out. Where, where again, just to remind everybody, where can they find you on Twitter and uh, and the podcast you're involved with? Okay. So everyone check out Dugout Station on all handles, YouTube. We're looking for subscribers for sure. So we appreciate those. Twitter and Instagram as well. Um, my personal is Julian Gallardi1. And we're also on TikTok. That's awesome. Hey, look, let, let's do this again real soon. 
Yeah, let me know. I'll shoot Chris a message. I'll know I hopped in the, the pit, and um, I'll follow all your stuff, and we'll get it going. Thanks That's for having awesome. me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, let's hope for some good baseball this week out in Oakland. Yeah, I'll be. I'll send you some messages. We'll see, we'll go back and forth, see how these games look. Maybe, right. hopefully, there's not any surprises on our hands. All right, we'll see. Good luck. You too. All right, be good. Yes. Julian Gillardi, thank you for joining the show today. I want to get rid of this display name so you can properly see my cell shirt. Uh, or we could look at this. Uh, my world segment. Uh, yeah, the reverse boycott night. That was the last uh, show. It was two weeks ago today. Unfortunately, we had some audio issues. Uh, it was so damn loud there that uh, some of the guests uh, coming on before the show couldn't hear me. But it was a lot of fun. It was fun seeing seeing the Coliseum again for me. I, I haven't been there since 1977, so it was a couple of lifetimes ago. But uh, it was fun to do that. Um, yeah, I want to... Um, two things I want to do. Number one, I haven't called Dave Cavill in a while, so we're going to do that here. Uh, and while he ignores my phone call again, uh, Rob Manfred is, Rob Manfred has become the worst, the worst commissioner in sports. If he wasn't already, he is now here. Um, there's just complete lack of respect, complete lack of respect for A's fans and the situation in Oakland is just tone deaf. He clearly wants a team in Las Vegas and doesn't care what he has to do to get it. Uh, waiving the two or three hundred million relocation fee pretty much convinces me of that fact. Um, so he's slime. And again, there's a couple different ways to handle things. You make a tough decision like that. You always have a fan base that's that's you know upset, right? You don't have you don't have to take a dump on them either. So uh, Rob Manfred's an absolute. Your call has been forwarded to the voicemail for David Cavill. No one is available to take your call. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press the pound key for more options. Dave, buddy, Sean Martin, Pugsley's Pit, Albany, New York. Where you been? I don't know how many times I called you. Six, seven, eight times? Dude, call me back. I've left my number. Call me back. I want to hear. I haven't heard a whole lot about uh, your venture in Vegas yet. I know you got the uh, politicians. Uh, finally saw the light. Let's... We'll say it that way, right? They saw the light. Um, but anyway, I haven't seen much, and I can just can't help but feeling, hoping, but also feeling that somehow you and your boss are going to screw this up. Um, I just don't think you know what you're doing, but we shall see, my friend. But hey, give me a call. We'll put you on the air. Bye now. Oh, Dave Cowell. He never returns his phone calls. I can't stand it. But anyway. So on that note, we are going to let you go. Let's get this god-awful face off my program. Uh, hey, look, next week, 4th of July, we'll be here sometime during the week. Not 100% sure. Uh, but until then, uh, just a reminder, uh, look, I wrote to my boys, uh, Shameless Blood Time, dear Liam and Noah. Uh, look about my life and the advice that I give to my uh, soon-to-be seven-year-old twin boys. Uh, if you found on Amazon, also at dearlyandmore.com. Again, follow the show Twitter, Hugsley's Pit, taking the podcast, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. And with that, I am out of here and have yourselves awesome. Awesome.